we're faced with difficulty, a physical diagnosis or any trouble, can we heal? The answer is yes. Hi, I'm Alex Fisher and my first passion in life was law. It was such a passion that I would read law books when I was 10 years old. I became a litigation attorney, but something else came into my life, and that thing was Christian science. It may feel weird, those two terms together, it may feel weird. Uh, Christian, it's all about the ideas expressed by Jesus, and science, it's how we can prove those ideas, how we can find healing in our life. So back then, I was at the law firm and uh, looking into the book Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, which shares those healings and explain how to heal. And what was really amazing me was that it's not about dogmas, it's not about religious beliefs, it's not about believing anything, it's about feeling, it's about ideas that make sense to you. If I fast forward a bit uh, my story, uh, eventually I'll drop my uh, successful litigation practice to embrace a career in healing others, in explaining others how to heal through those ideas by being a Christian science practitioner, who basically is someone who helps others find healing through prayer. And there is a, a healing that I experienced that was really interesting in my practice. Uh, one day a woman came to me and uh, she said that she'd been diagnosed with breast cancer. She said that she had uh, two children and she didn't want to leave those orf orphans. She said that uh, the kind doctors and everyone at the hospital were offering possibilities for healing, but she felt it was not for her. She had never heard of Christian science, but uh, she felt she wanted something more natural. So here she was and talking to me. She also explained that she did not believe in God. The next thing I told her was surprising to her. I said, well, I don't believe in God either. She was like, what? I said, no, I don't believe in God. It's not about believing in God. It's about knowing our relationship with the infinite. It's about embracing, understanding better this infinite good that is God. So she was happy with this. The short story is that we'll work together for a few months and uh, she'll embrace many uh, spiritual concepts, ideas. One of them was that she was not guilty. It was not like life was making her suffering. It's not like she had to go through this. Her identity, her foundation was perfection, is perfection. And that's a deep spiritual concept because God, the infinite source of all that is, produces only perfection, only wholeness, and that's what she was. So she was beginning to grasp, grasp those ideas. But you see, she was not about believing it, blindly thinking it. It was not about positive thinking. It was really a yielding to the divine, a yielding to her oneness with God. One day, uh, she went uh, for a jog outside and she realized that she had no more symptoms. No pain, the lump was gone, the body was, was perfect. And she knew, she knew deep inside her, she knew that she was healed. She knew that that sense of perfection was something that she was owning, that she owned. I still talk to this woman from time to time. She's doing amazing and she shared those ideas with others. In a way, you know, this story, this healing serves only one purpose. What does it mean for us? What does it mean for us if we're faced with difficulty, a physical diagnosis or any trouble? Can we heal like that? The answer is yes. And it's not just one healing. You'll see as you look into Christian science, there have been thousands and thousands of healings. But again, that's irrelevant. Numbers is not what matters. What matters is, is what do we do now? How do we do it? What is prayer? Jesus talked about prayer and Christian science is based on the Bible, on the essence, the spiritual essence of the Bible. Jesus explained that prayer is not about saying stuff. It's not about, it's not a word therapy. It's really embracing our oneness with the infinite. 
we could spend a lot of time describing what God is. The Bible says God is truth, reality, spirit, spiritual. God is good. God is principle, we can add. This is the source of everything that we are. And if I was to really describe prayer in a very, very uh, short way, prayer is really yielding to that sense of our oneness with the infinite. So it is something mental, but it is not something of a positive thinking nature. It is more a yielding to the divine. You know, when you think of an idea, oh, I'm going to have some pizza tonight. Well, you can think that uh, you want a pizza. You, have, you can see your track of thought. I was hungry. There's a pizza place here. Therefore, I have a pizza. In a way, you created the idea. When we yield to the divine, we don't create the idea. That sense of perfection, that sense of oneness to the divine is something we discover in our thought. Something that becomes more real to us as we ponder the concept and the ideas in the Bible. So how do we do it? How do we do it if uh, we're faced with a challenge? How do we start? Well, the first thing to recognize is that Jesus said that he could do nothing of his own self. Still, he healed many people. So it's not about personal skills. It's not about how good you are or, or how bad you are. It's really about recognizing that God is in charge. Perfection governs. Principle is responsible. So it is, in a way, stepping away from the challenge of wanting to solve it to embrace more of our uh, oneness with God. The other thing that I found helpful uh, to start with when we pray is to recognize what is going on right now. You may say, well, what's going on is the symptom or the challenge or the, the fear of the exam coming up or whatever family situation. That's what's going on. Well, not spiritually, not really. And Jesus says, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. It's not about the truth about, I have the truth, you don't have it. It's about reality. You'll become more aware of reality. And if there was one thing to remember from our little discussion here would be, yes, it's about embracing reality. And that reality is, you know this saying for kids, there is no spot where God is not. It doesn't mean that God is in physical nature. It means that reality is entirely spiritual. And what we see as physical nature is a counterfeit, a misconception about spiritual nature, the true reality of all things. Two words used in the Bible by Jesus. He said, the kingdom of God is within you. So not the kingdom with a, a crown and a king, the kingdom of God has the ever presence of good, the ever presence of harmony. And that's what heals. That's how this lady was healed, by embracing more reality. But by discarding the sense of guilt, the sense of physical limitation. So I find it very helpful when I pray to recognize that whatever the challenge is, it's just a misconception. But actually, really, everything is already good. This is not about being naive or ignoring evil. It's actually about following Jesus' step. When Jesus was asked about evil, uh, disease and all those things, he said, evil is a lie. Well, what is a lie? Well, if I was to say right now, I am a polar bear, well, that's a lie, but it doesn't make two of us, me talking and a polar bear. There's just one of us, one, just me, and the lie. So the same with that sense of limited life, born in limitations, dying, we don't know why. This sense of humanity with a suffering is the lie. I know it feels very real to most of us, but that's the promise of the Bible, that we can escape from this lie to find more freedom, more harmony. And that's what this lady found. So to summarize, and it's an infinite subject, prayer is not about changing something wrong into something good. It's not about changing the body. It's about changing our thought, yielding to the divine, because everything we experience humanly is a state of consciousness. So this sense of limitations is just a false sense of consciousness. But when through prayer we embrace more of the divine, there's a shift in consciousness and that's how we experience tangibly the kingdom of God, this sense of harmony, just like this woman who was fully healed. She had this sense of perfection. 
prayer is not about changing something, it's about embracing ideas. And you know, and I'll finish with this, uh, Jesus said he could do nothing of his own self, but he didn't say he could do nothing. He said that he was the Christ, the divinity, the divine in him, the divine in us that does the healing. Very practically, the Christ is our spiritual oneness that Jesus expressed so well. So anytime we're faced with a challenge, we can really rely on this uh, Psalm 46, which says, be still and know that I am God. Stealing the sense of, oh, I want to fix it, or what is going to happen, to really embrace those ideas that come to us, those angel thoughts, intuition, the Christ, whatever the term we use to describe this sense of peace, this sense of our certainty of our oneness with God that really is like the light in our consciousness that dissolves any darkness. So whatever your situation, even if it's arguably incurable, impossible to heal, messed up, or you mess up, or you messed up, all those things are just lies. And what do you do to deal with a lie? Well, you just need the truth. And Jesus said, you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. It is not an exercise of you doing something, it's about you yielding to your oneness with God, and that will provide with the right idea that will dissolve the challenge just before your eyes. It doesn't happen only once, twice, it happens countless of times, and this is the promise of the Bible for you. So if you want more information, I realize it was quite short, we packed up a lot in few words, there is a down below in the there's a description link uh, that takes you to a, a longer version uh, of the lectures and many other lectures and I know you'll find what you need in those lectures.